calculate the number of seats I have, the number of guests we have upstairs, and I determine that seats 1 to 36 shall be the first seating today, and then 37 to 72 shall be the second. Now, the upstairs in the second seating, again, not to worry, we'll come through the coffee or tea trolley, and my grandmother's freshly baked secret recipe is gone upstairs here. And if you're hungry at any time, Please let, let us know, and we have lots of snacks on board. Downstairs in the dining room, you will notice there's booths of four, and there's no assigned seating, so you can sit wherever you like, and you can change your, the seating as we progress throughout the, the meal services. The breakfast menu is the same, today and tomorrow. The lunch menu will change, so if you're not sure what you were having for breakfast, you get a second choice at it tomorrow. All right, so seats 1 to 36. Facility to accept any kind of debit card with a PIN number, but if it is a, has the Visa symbol on it, we can use that. Um, and we don't accept cash either. So if you have any questions about that souvenir process as I'm coming through, just let me know or ask any one of us, in fact. And then uh, moving on, we have the little gold pamphlet here. And we are mostly knowledgeable. Um, we can probably answer your question, and if we can't, then we will find the answer for you. And then we have a little white bag. You might recognize it from the airline. It does not serve the same purpose on the train, although if you do feel the need, it is there. Um, this, you can actually hang it onto the um, seat back in front of you with the little tabs, and it serves as a little trash receptacle. So there's some fresh fruit downstairs. If you need somewhere to put your apple core or something, you just pop it in the little bag, and uh, it'll keep your area a little clean. Last but not least is the Milepost newspaper. Now this is your most important piece of information. It uh, is your fact checker. So if Keith and I are rambling on about something and you don't quite believe us, well, it's probably in here and you can go and check our facts. Um, also, if you turn to the middle page, you have a map of the areas that we're traveling through. So today we're following the blue line up from Jasper down into Kamloops. And you'll notice there are small little numbers along that route. Those numbers correspond to the miles that we're traveling next to. So you can find mile markers on either side of the train. Uh, and there'll be small little white poster boards with black numbers on them. And those, again, correspond to the miles. Also, I just want to point out here the river that we're traveling next to at the moment. This is the Fraser River. So we're traveling, uh, it's headwaters or near Moose Lake, so it's not coming from Moose Lake, but it's coming from near Moose Lake. So we're traveling really close to the headwaters of the Fraser River. Uh, we'll be traveling alongside the Fraser River for a few more miles, and then we'll say goodbye to it. When we meet up again with it tomorrow, it'll look drastically different from how it looks right now. And that's because we are so close to its headwaters. So we'll explain that a little bit more tomorrow. miles on the railway, whereas Everywhere else in Canada, we, we go by kilometers. Um, you'll also notice that the numbers in Jasper started at zero, and they start to climb to about 130, and then they drop down to zero again, and then they'll climb back up to about 130, 135. Now, for the reason for this is because we're traveling to subdivisions. The, uh, the top of it um, doesn't matter what the weather is doing that day. Uh, it kind of does its own thing with weather, so often there is a cloud around the top of it. But we are very lucky today to be able to see the whole thing. Uh, you will notice the striations on the, the halfway up, in, up the mountain. Uh, it was formed by sedimentary rock. Uh, the, uh, the mountain itself uh, uh, rose from uh, what used to be a uh, massive inland sea. And uh, that was a million years ago. It rose straight up from the sea.
Another two mile long tray.
a couple of First Nations young ladies and the local First Nations tribes were obviously not happy with this at all and they uh, took revenge on these two by decapitating them and throwing their bodies in the river. So this happened a ways off the cannon and the bodies floated down to the town of Yale around that area too. They ended up in an eddy in the river and they were floating around there and Yale were coming up to very soon. Uh, the people in Yale found these bodies and they didn't know that this was the result of uh, some evil doings. They thought the local First Nations were just randomly killing people and decapitating them. So this obviously scared them. The result was many people headed south to the town of Hope and uh, some people decided they were going to do something about it. So six groups of militia were formed. Two of them took off up the river um, in search of the First Nations who had now also uh, combined forces, several tribes together, and two of these militia groups decided they were going to push for peace. Another one uh, had a completely different approach. They marched on up the river, destroying every First Nations building and person they found. Another one, perhaps the most uh, um, the most shocking outcome, if you will, they went up and they were looking to battle, and they got as far as the First Nations campsite, and uh, it was evening. So they decided they were going to wait till morning and they were, would make their attack then. Now in the night, someone's musket fell over and discharged. And uh, they started firing because someone was firing at them. And the First Nations people across the river, they were watching all of this at night. They saw these flashes going off. They didn't know what was going on. Uh, and in the morning, they crossed the river to see what had happened on the other side. And they discovered that this entire group of militia had wiped each other out with friendly fire. <laughs> Three of them survived, only three. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of the funny part of the story. Uh, there is good outcome in this though. Uh, eventually two militia captains did make it to the, uh, the amalgamated First Nations and uh, they did have talks and uh, they had actually threatened that more and more settlers would come and, uh, and they would come with guns and everything and wipe out the First Nations if they decided to go to war. Uh, and it turned out peace was more uh, more uh, desirable for both groups. So they did make the first uh, treaties of British Columbia with the First Nations. And part of that treaty was that the entire Fraser Canyon uh, would no longer be used in search of gold. Uh, the seekers would all go north, they would use the Caribou Wagon Road, 
and, uh, and go just north of the canyon in general. As well, the local First Nations people have sole rights to fishing on the river, and uh, I don't know there'd be no more battles. So, uh, in the end, a, what could have been a much bigger war was over. Manager Zebulon standing at the back there. Um, I've had a fantastic time. I really hope you all have too, and I hope that your uh, wherever your travels take you continues to be good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> my first time upstairs on the microphone. Hi. I just wanted to take this trip. This is trip. I just wanted to thank you. Uh, if you tell we all love our jobs here and we wouldn't have our jobs if it weren't for you so thank you so much for choosing to ride the Rocky Mountain here and we really really do appreciate uh, you coming aboard with us and sharing the trip with us hello I would also like to say thank you and I just have one question are you hungry <laughs> uh, I'm hungry. Then my job here is done. Uh, so yeah, I would like to say thank you as well. It's uh, been a pleasure. I hope that you enjoyed your time. And um, as they were saying, like we we do really love our job, and uh, we are happy that you are in Vancouver and that you get to see why we live here and why we love this city and hopefully you do have a couple days here uh, and you are experiencing the true Vancouver weather which is great so you can go home and tell everybody yes it does really rain all the time and I do believe that we have some thank you cards that we are going to hand out to you uh, while we were stopped waiting for a freight train, uh, Dominique got out, got in our helicopter, took some wonderful <laughs> pictures of you in the train, and uh, we put those on a postcard really quickly for you. <laughs> and so there's two postcards in there for you, and uh, you can only get those on this journey on the Rocky Mountaineer. And also, please, you do have our permission to sell our signed cards on eBay because we are going to be famous. So you're welcome. <laughs> so we're just going to come share these cards for you and thanks again. <laughs>